Now, please welcome on stage our second keynote speaker, Ms. Jian Liu, Professor of the School of Architecture, Tsinghua University. Ms. Liu is a registered city planner in China, managing chief editor of China City Planning Review, and past president of the Asian Planning Schools Association. Please, <laughs> please give her a warm round of applause. Okay, now it works. So, okay, so I can start. Um, so, distinguished uh, designers, dear colleagues. So, my name is Chen Liu. Uh, coming from Tsinghua University, Beijing, China. So I was trained as architect, but have taught uh, urban planning design in almost uh, 30 years. So it's my great pleasure uh, and honor to be invited to speak uh, uh, on the WDO uh, events. It's my first time, and also first time so uh, be involved in the community of in industrial designers. Um, this gives me uh, an uh, exceptional opportunity to go beyond my profession and to communicate with design experts from uh, uh, other fields and also from all over the world. So for a long time, especially in China, uh, for the general public, uh, design has been regarded as mostly part of arts and the activities related to the uh, production of artistic work. Uh, however, since uh, the concept of design science was introduced in the mid 20th century, design has been gradually uh, accepted as both art and the science and has been applied in uh, more fields, even including policy. So today, uh, based on my research on the urbanization in China and my practice of urban planning design in China, uh, I would like to share with you some of my thoughts, thoughts on whether and how planning can harmonize the relationship between man and nature and uh, uh, to promote the sustainable development of uh, human settlements. I will start my discourse uh, with the interesting attribute of the planet, uh, eternal change. So according to the theories of ecology and the dialectics, the Earth on which we are living uh, is an alive system that never stops changing. We human beings, uh, as artificial element of this organic system, are always facing the challenges of changing for surviving as long as possible, thus so never stops changing too. So human beings use creative thinking and innovative tools to deal with this endless changing of the nature and the human society, as well as the interaction between them, which in turn determines the future of the planet and the mankind as well. So this natural law of changing has gone through the development of human settlements particularly in the modern time along with the process of urbanization, which led to the birth of urban planning at the turn of the 20th century as both a policy and a technical tool to tackle with the problems caused by the demographic uh, agglomeration and special expansion of cities uh, under the driving of industrialization, like what happened in London at, the, at your right, uh, left hand and the Paris uh, at your right hand. And in the middle is actually uh, the uh, death place in London at that time. So urban planning is both a discipline and a profession. That means practice. 
aiming at scientifically managing the production of human settlements at multiple levels. Uh, it was uh, uh, conceptualized from a series of pioneering practice taking place in the second part of the uh, 19th century. Uh, in particular, the experiments of utopian socialism in the UK, the US, and France, the legislation of empowering local authority for public uh, health in the UK, the practice of urban renewal in Paris, in France, uh, and then the City Beautiful Movement in the US. Uh, in practical terms, it refers to technical and political process dealing with land use and the built environment for common wealth, while in academic terms, uh, it refers to the science, arts and technology concerning the spatial organization of human settlements by representing in a comprehensive way the values of economy, society, environment, culture, and the politics. Since the Industrial Revolution, uh, the world has been in the process of urbanization driven by industrialization. Cities became the engine for the world's social economic development, playing far-reaching influences on the quality of human life, the evolution of human society, and the future of the planet. Data tells us that the world became an urban society in 2007, with more people living in urban areas than rural areas and also implying that uh, cities are more responsible for global issues. This makes urban planning facing more critical challenges because the policy design of urban planning may help change man's mindset about human settlement development and change man's behaviors in human settlement development. Let's take China as example. So as the largest developing country of the world until very recently, ex uh, exceeding by India in terms of population, China has seen a rapid social economic development since its reforms and the opening up in the late 1970s. Its accelerating process of urbanization is unprecedented in the history of human society in terms of skill and the speed. For more than uh, four decades, every year in China, there has been 14 million people migrating from rural areas to urban areas for a better life, making Chinese cities keep increasing in amount, which you will see from the table, um, growing uh, in population and expanding in area turning the country from a rural society to an urban society in 2011. So the diagram here you, you, you refers to the construction skill uh, in China. So that's why Joseph Stiglitz, Nobel laureate, uh, laureate in economic science, uh, listed the urbanization in China and the high-tech development in the United States as two key factors influencing the 21st century. However, influenced by the ideology of growthism, during this process of urbanization, cities were often regarded as economic engine rather than human settlement, with more attention being paid to economic growth rather than to humanism and environmentalism aspects. Remarkable, uh, remarkable achievements in economy were accompanied by unneglectable social and environmental problems in form of urban and rural diseases. So on the one side, uh, in urban China, particularly in big cities, there appear such urban diseases as the disappearance of green on urban periphery due to urban expansion, the spatial segregation of housing between high and low income groups due to the market speculation, the social inequity in public services between those with and without local household registration, the city and townscape with few uh, local identity, which criticized as thousand towns in one appearance, which you may see from the two photos on the bottom, 
The existence of a good cities along with the large scale urban development for land revenue and the appearance of shrinking cities following economic restructuring, which you may see from the diagram at your right hand. So all this lead to the concerns of the Chinese society on the quality development of the cities. While on the other side, uh, in rural China, there appear the rural disease of village shrinking and the disappearance due to the loss of population. Actually, in the past decades, in average, average, every day, there are over 50 villages disappearing in China. Um, there's, there appear the weak development impetus due to the lack of investments low development level of public service compared with urban areas, uh, contorted social structure featured by demography composed of mainly uh, of female, children, and elderly because the, female uh, the male labor force stay in cities for making their life. There is the declination of physical environment along with the outflow of population all this lead to the concerns of the Chinese society on the healthy development of the countryside. Moreover, from the national perspective, there appear the problems of farmlands reduction, which even endanger the food supply safety. The environmental degradation due to air, water, and the soil pollutions Regional disparity between urban and rural uh, areas and the east and west of the country. The increase of disaster uh, impacts uh, by earthquake, landslides, and flooding. And the coming of the aging society, as showed at the diagram at your right hand again. All this lead to the concerns of the society on the sustainability of China's development uh, in the long term. So this made uh, urban planning face the critical challenge of transforming the urbanization development mode for the sustainability of not only the urban development of any single city, but the urbanization development of the whole country. It was under these circumstances that the new policies of urbanization and urban planning were designed in line with the spirit of ecological civilization to shift the development mode of urbanization and the human settlements. So the concept of uh, uh, ecological civilization was firstly proposed in 2007 as part of the scientific views of development. It became a national strategy in 2012 and being implemented through the five-year plans since 2015 aiming at reshaping the interrelationship between people and nature. It promotes green recycling and the low carbon development by highlighting saving resources in all aspects to show the respect to the nature, optimizing the spatial layout of urban development to show the adaptation to the nature and preserving the ecosystem and the environment to show the protection to the nature. Under its guidance, uh, guidance, the National Plan of New Urbanization of China was issued by the central government in 2014 to orient, uh, reorient China's urbanization from quantity uh, growth to quality development, uh, highlighting people-oriented development to ensure social equity Synchronous development to ensure regional and urban rural balance, reasonable city layout in form of city cluster to ensure land use efficiency and cultural continuity to ensure local and national identity. At the same time, the planning mindset started to shift from quantity oriented to quality oriented with more attention to people's life ecological safety, resource rec uh, recycling, and the land use efficiency. Promoting the regeneration and upgrading of cities through urban renovation, the coordination of urban-rural development through rural revitalization, and the balance of regional development, development through city cluster networking. 
The new territorial and spatial planning system was structured to coordinate the spatial layout of the three functions of ecological protection, agricultural production, and urban rural development at different levels, while taking into consideration all the elements of both artificial and the natural space, i.e. cities, towns, and villages as human settlements, and mountains, rivers, woodlands, farmlands, wetlands, grasslands, deserts as natural elements. Under the guidance of the above-mentioned policies, planning practice of different kinds were conducted at different levels. At the regional level, regional planning was carried out by the central government to foster the growth of city clusters based on regional cooperation like in Jingjingji region, large steel developments were decentralized from Beijing to Beijing suburban uh, sub-city center in Tongzhou. Uh, like here, this is, uh, sorry, I don't see it, which you, you may, I didn't. Um, on the uh, middle up is the new city center of Beijing where the city government is located. And the Binghai new area in Tianjin, the uh, bottom in the middle, and new uh, Xing, Xing'an, uh, Xiong'an new area uh, right up, um, and uh, also Zhangjiakou, which uh, the city hosted uh, the uh, two, 2022 Beijing uh, Winter Olympic uh, Games. So the idea is actually to promote the formation of the capital region. At the urban level, urban planning was conducted by sorry, <clears throat> municipal and county governments to increase the land use efficiency by building the city on the city through urban renovation and eco-restoration. Like the case on the up, the case of Beijing Shougang, which is transformed from an industrial site of steel and iron manufacturing into a new multifunctional urban node that hosted also the 2022 Beijing uh, Winter Olympic Games. Uh, the bottom, um, on the bottom is the case from Tangshan, um, uh, Tangshan Nanhu area, which is transformed from a huge refuse landfill into an eco park surrounded by new urban constructions. Uh, in view that nowadays there are over 20 million people living in shabby settlements in Chinese cities, Urban renovation will be the core of the policy design of planning uh, in future. At the community level, community planning was carried out by local authorities under the leadership of local governments and in collaboration with local communities and the third party uh, organizations like uh, colleges and uh, universities involving the participation of local residents in the planning and design for the issues of community gardening, public space beautification, uh, collective memory uh, preservation, and other uh, uh, community issues. So this might be popular in, in many other countries, but this bottom-up grassroots planning governance is very commendable in China in view of a strong tradition of top-down administration and will undoubtedly uh, play a significant role in the practice of urban renovation uh, in future. In the countryside, village planning was carried out either by local governments or rural collectives, all through the collaboration between the two. Uh, for purpose of re realizing the civilization of farmers, the modernization of agriculture and the commonwealth of the countryside. However, up to now, the main obstacle of urban-rural dual system in terms of household registration and land administration still remains, calling for skillful policy design to tackle with. From the various planning practice at different levels, um, there arise the concerns on particular subjects in response to actual demands and the global crisis. So among them, there are the building of all friendly cities to create a better living environment, especially for the vulnerable groups of children, elderly, female, and new immigrants. Uh, again, in Chinese cities, there are uh, about uh, 200 million children 
plus 200 million elderly, plus 200 million immigrants without local uh, household registration. So they are really the vulnerable groups. Um, and also the building of complete, uh, complete communities in 15-minute living circles to facilitate community daily life and green travels. And uh, the building of resilient and carbon neutrality cities by highlighting the multiple functions of structural green buffers in terms of biodiversity, horticulture, agriculture, recreation, emergency shelter, storm management, and the climate mediation, like in the case of Shanghai and, uh, and uh, Beijing. Following the changes in planning practice, planning education has also been in the, trans in the process of transformation. In order to reform the value shaping, knowledge structuring, and the capability, uh, cap uh, capacity building of professional talents, so at my School of Architecture uh, of Tsinghua University, uh, the sciences of human settlements uh, was proposed with its uh, humanity value, comprehensive capacity, and uh, multidisciplinary uh, knowledge. It takes the, the integration of architecture, planning, and landscape as academic core centered on man and promotes the interdisciplinarity uh, interdisciplinarity of related uh, fields to create new knowledges and new problem solutions. So according to this theory, human settlements is a mega system of uh, complexity composed of uh, multiple elements, which you may see from the diagram at your right hand, and structured in multiple levels and concerning multiple aspects. And the development of human settlements should be in line with the principles of equity and balance among people of different generations and different uh, uh, regions, and between people and nature and among various regions. Multiple optional solutions, instead of one unique solution, should be worked out through problem-oriented, transdisciplinary, and comprehensive studies. So the short narrative on the transformation of China's urbanization and planning practice may show from one aspect of the far-reaching impacts of policy design on the future development of human settlements. Nowadays, we are in a changing world full of uncertainty, ambiguity, and complexity. However, as human beings, we shall have consensus on the future of the human society and the planet and make our efforts to achieve this consensus goal. For that, design should go further beyond our professional boundaries to play a steel role in dealing with the challenges of changing for a better future of the human society and the planet. With design thinking to cultivate new ideas and new solutions, design process as platform of participation and negotiation of multiple parties to achieve the consensus and design technology to support the implementation of innovative solutions. As designers, we create not only beautiful things in physical form, like uh, industrial items, architecture, and the cities, but also the way of thinking, imagining, and making beautiful things. This is our contribution and our duty as well to shape a better world. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Li, for sharing your insights.